Ignite Jr., what's up? Pastor Preston here bringing you a special message. Hopefully next week you will be able to hear from James, Jasmine, or Akin, but I'm standing in the gap for them right now, and I want to talk to you about something that you are experiencing. Maybe it hasn't hit you all the way yet, but it's something that all of us are going through. We're all being asked to be socially distant from one another, meaning we can't gather in groups, we're not supposed to get together and hang out with our friends, and after a while, that will make you feel isolated, all alone. What I wanna to talk to you guys about today is the fact that isolation can actually be used to our benefit. Isolation, if used properly, can actually help us out. So I'm gonna open up in a quick word of prayer and then talk about the power of isolation. So Father, I just thank you for today. I thank you for this morning. I thank you for all of my friends who are online listening and just continue to protect them and guard them, protect their parents from the virus, protect their grandparents from the virus, protect our church from the virus in the name of Jesus and help us to use this time where we're kind of forced to be by ourselves to draw closer to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I just kind of gave you a hint in the prayer how isolation can be used to our benefit. I want to read you an account of King David who found strength in isolation when the whole world came against him, when he was in a sense quarantined all by himself and everything else was against him, kind of like the virus is against us, kind of forcing us all to stay in our homes. And even when you do go outside, it's like a ghost town. It's weird out there right now. But in these moments, they're very unique and very, very useful. So I'm hoping that we could find a lesson from King David's life and then, of course, from Jesus. But I'll start with King David. And this is found in 1 Samuel chapter 30, and I'll begin in verse 1. So, three days later, when David and his men arrived home, they found that enemies had made a raid in their home and crushed it and burned it to the ground. They carried off the women and children and everyone else, but without killing anyone. When David and his men realized what had happened and saw the ruins, they wept until they could weep no more. Furthermore, David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter and angry about losing their sons and daughters, and they began to talk about stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God. So at this point, David is not king yet. So there's still another king. Saul is still the official king, but David had a bunch of people who were his ride or die friends and they were his troops and they went out and they handled all of the business that needed to be handled in protecting Israel. Well, after one of their missions, they came home to see that their home wasn't there anymore. It was burnt to the ground. Not only that, their wives and their children were kidnapped. So these people who were David's best friends and David himself, because they were so bummed out, David's best friends turned into his enemies like that. And just like that, David found himself isolated. His people who went into battle with him, his best friends who went to war for him, who would lay down their lives for him, all of a sudden were talking about killing him. Talk about isolation. But look at what it says in the last part of what I read you. So he was isolated. They were talking about killing him, throwing rocks at him. What a terrible way to die. It says David found strength in the Lord. So that is how David utilized his isolation, his being all by himself to help himself out because he found strength in the Lord. So now we're going to talk about how Jesus was isolated and how he also found strength. So I'm going to read you another verse from Luke. This is chapter 22, verse 39. Then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. This was after they ate the Last Supper, which I'm sure some of you guys have heard about. It's a very famous thing that happened. Jesus walked away from his disciples about a stone's throw away, and he knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. 
Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. So this is the night before Jesus was going to be crucified, was going to die for our sins. And talk about feeling all alone. Talk about feeling isolated. Up to this point, it was Jesus and his disciples and his friends. They were all a part of the same mission. They were working together. Jesus was healing people. His disciples were right there with him. But when it came down to it, for him to perform the thing that he was born to perform, die for our sins, that was a one-man job. He was all by himself. He was isolated. So it says that he left his friends, he left his disciples, and he went and he fell on his face before God and he prayed. And in that isolation where he prayed to God, it says that an angel of the Lord strengthened him. He found strength in isolation. He found strength all by himself because an angel of the Lord, meaning God, when it says angel of the Lord, that means God strengthened him. And this is what is a promise for all of us. All of us in this time of social distancing, we can find strength in isolation. Because here's one of the greatest promises that the Bible tells us. Deuteronomy. This is an Old Testament book in the Bible. This is what God says to us. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not panic. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you and he will never abandon you. So that is the great promise that God gives to all of us who say that Jesus is the son of God, that Jesus died for our sins, that Jesus came back to life. For those of us who believe that about Jesus, God says to you, I will never leave you. So you don't have to freak out. You don't have to be overwhelmed by fear and anxiety. You don't have to feel super lonely to the point of being overwhelmed by it because I am with you. So you guys, this is a very unique opportunity for you guys to really, really get close to God because all of the distractions in your life are being cut down to nothing. You're not allowed to really hang out with your friends. You're not going to school. And I'm sure for the first week, you guys probably zoned out. Just watch Netflix 24-7, play video games 24-7. But come on, you know that gets old after a while. After a while, you're like, oh, man, I don't even want to play anymore Call of Duty. I can't take another game of Fortnite. So after a while, things are going to slow down to the point where you're just like, what is going on? I'm all by myself. I can't hang out with my friends. This is terrible. These moments can be used to strengthen you in a way that hardly anything else can. You can truly, truly find strength in your isolation when you realize that you are not truly actually alone, but that God is with you. So you don't have to freak out. You don't have to feel like you're by yourself. I pray that you guys will be like David in this moment. I pray that you will do what Jesus did, that you will find strength in isolation. So let me pray for you and that'll be that. So Father, I just thank you for every single person who is listening pray that you would bless them as they're by themselves, but they're not really by themselves. So help them to realize that they're not really alone because you say you will never leave us. You will never abandon us and that we can find strength in you. Even as the world feels like it's going crazy with this virus surrounding us, I thank you that we can strengthen ourselves in you, even as David strengthened himself in you. And especially even as Jesus strengthened himself in you, Father, prayed to you and you comforted him. Do the same for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Love you guys. Hopefully it'll be James or Jasmine or maybe even Akin that you see next week. If not, see you then. <laughs>